So good afternoon, everybody. My name is Olivier Chopin, and I'm going to present to you work that we carried out with my colleague Jean-Michel at the University, Gustav Eiffel. The subject concerns moving towards enriched mechanical models for the modeling of the road pavements. And then what we're interested in in this context is the development of a digital model, a three-dimensional model that takes into account the damage, damage done to the road pavement. And the modeling is based on the M44N. I'll go into detail on that afterwards. And what we wanted to look at in particular was all of the course cracking and also what happens in terms of the interfaces, notably desponding, that we sometimes see. And we wanted to do modeling in relation to these interfaces. So the subject was one of the DVD-C themes, so concerning the models of structural deterioration. What we wanted to do was um, model and measure the type of cracking that we see in road pavement structures. We had two main axes for this study. First of all, the first axis concerns the road itineraries. I'm not going to go into detail on this one. But then you have the second one that is more local, the local structure. And for this one, we applied mechanistic approaches based on the taking into account by mechanical models of the damage that can come about on the road pavements and on its structure. So with regard to the work that we did, first and foremost, we wanted to look at the adaptation and the use of a mechanical model in order to be able to simulate the way in which the road pavement responds. The M44N, as I said, and it's all about um, piling up piling up plates for the road. So a plate uh, represents each aspect. So the interest of the model here is that for the most part, we're looking at its capacity to take into account the discontinuities in the structure, whether they're discontinuities such as cracks or whether it's a question of the surface area becoming unstuck. Generally speaking, it's advantage in relation to more standard models, for example, the finished 3D elements. It's first of all that this type of model makes it easier to perform geometrical descriptions of the road pavement because that can be rather complex when you're doing three-dimensional modeling. And the other advantage is the value of the mechanical field that is calculated based on this model is still limited in terms of the discontinuities, notably at the cracking point, whereas it's not the case, for example, if you have three, 3D systems. Do keep in mind, nevertheless, though, that with this model, we're simulating cracks that develop in a 3D environment. And so, hence, we can get pretty close to the complex uh, forms of degradation that you would see in 3D models. So, the aim of this work is to um, establish how the structure deteriorates and to look at how the um, cracks spread. Of course, there are many different ways of um, Using this work, it can enable you to interpret the measurements, the local measurements that you performed on a road pavement, or this could also be used in order to forecast the way in which the structural condition is going to evolve over time if there's damage to the road surface. Imagine there's damage to a structure, and thanks to this kind of solution, we'll be able to evaluate the kinetics. So what are the objectives? Well, for us, we wanted to carry out the necessary de developments so that we could take into account these cracks and the way in which the cracks spread um, on the road surface. And we also wanted to implement these mathematical developments in a calculation code. Um, this was the first approach. The second part was to apply the tool in order to examine an initial case of a crack in a road pavement. So very briefly, I'm going to present these two aspects to you. 
once again to round off on the objectives. When we started out, the starting point was to have an M45N finite element. This was um, something that had been developed in 2016 in a thesis, and then there was earlier work as well that had been done, and this was developed by our friend Arno Chabot at the Gustav Eiffel University. So there are three key stages in the digital developments carried out. One, we looked to generalize the technique of taking into account the vertical, vertical cracks on this model. The second stage was to determine the energy that was associated with the spreading of the cracking. This is what we call the energy restitution rate. And then lastly, we wanted to link these quantities to what we call a law such as the Paris law that enables us to work out and predict the potential fatigue damage, in other words, the kinetics, the kinetics that comes about because of the repetition of the rolling load on the, on the road. I'm not going to go into detail on this. What we want above all is to model the 3D structure with the different layers. What we do is imagine that this road surface is made up of a certain number of plates that are piled up on top of each other, and all the information in, within the different layers will be stored and compiled in the general model field. In other words, instead of working with um, the standard information, we've got what we call generalized fields that contain information on the thickness of the different layers. So the 3D issue that we had initially speaking in terms of the simulation will be brought brought back down to 2 day level. We'll formulate the problem in a 2D mode, but we're still retaining all of the information as if it was a 3D model, the deformation, etc. We've got all the information for the whole 3D model. So generally, we get these plates to rest on what we call Winkler springs. This guarantees that we have a certain, we can represent the rigidness of the soil. Um, and then we apply the mechanical methods and calculate the balance, etc., and the behavioral um, equations. What's very interesting in this model is from a digital perspective, we're able to solve a problem using 2D solutions, but the results will be relevant for a 3D setup. So as you can see, you have the whole mathematical theoretical part um, that we implemented. This was done partially, partly within the context of DVDC, and then we applied the tool to different cases. The first case well, what we wanted to do initially speaking was validate the approach. So we applied the model to the simulation of the new road structure, GB, GB3, for example. Then we compared the results that we obtained with the Elise software. So we have the standard GB3, GB3 structure. You've got the characteristics in the table with all of the thicknesses and the modules. We applied standard twinning to this structure, and then we looked at the mechanical response of the structure. So by way of an example, you have the deflection here, depending on the distance from the center of one of the twinning roads. And then you, for the M45N, you have the figures and then the calculation. We have a few slight differences, but these are used to certain approximations that we had in the model that we could have corrected. But the level of preciseness was sufficient to us, so we didn't take it further. That's what we wanted to say for deflection. Then we did the same thing for stress and um, the other aspects using exactly the same approach for these other mechanical fields. So that was the validation part for a calculation carried out on new road surfaces. Next, we carried out exactly the same calculation, but we introduced a crack at the base of the GB3. So here you have a cross section of our structure. And at the level of the GB3 here, all of the light gray area, this represents the presence of a crack. So we then applied the standard twinning on the road pavement. And what we wanted to do, basically, was see the impact of the presence of a crack in relation to the mechanical 
uh, reaction of the fracture, the first thing we were able to observe was that this kind of crack doesn't have much impact on the deflection of the road pavement. However, we saw a strong uh, increase in the deformation due to the presence of this crack. This was at the base of the SCAS. That was our first example. The second example is that we tested um, the impact as, as well by adding uh, a desponding surface. This is represented in red between the BBSG and the GB3. And here we applied the standard twinning. Then we looked at the impact of these defects on the way in which the structure reacted, and we were able to make exactly the same observations as previously. Low impact on deflection, but a sharp increase in deformation and stress. And on top of that, due to this discontinuity surface, we were able to note that there was discontinuity on either side of the desponding surface. So with the model, we're basically capable of evaluating and quantifying the value of these mechanical fields. What we did then was look at the impact of the fatigue damage on the road pavement, and we did it taking into account the cracks that, that existed. So what we're now interested in is how the cracks spread. In other words, we wanted to be able to predict. We wanted to say, OK, we have a crack in a structure. We need to be able to predict the kinetics of the evolution due to um, a repeated road pavement under traffic. So we had to calculate certain quantities that would bring about this evolution, that would bring about the uh, fracture, and we needed to include it in a calculation. We did this. It was validated by other modeling tools. So once we had, once we'd programmed all of this, we applied the tool with the spreading of the crack to a new example. We applied it to a structure that was made up of two layers of EME, five centimeters, one of GNT and one of soil. We applied the standard half axle, and this time what we wanted to study was the crack profile that started at the base of the high modulus asphalt. So at the base of the EME, we introduced an initial defect, and then we wanted to look at how this defect would evolve and how it did evolve following on from the application of um, traffic, let's say on the road pavement in question. So here you have a small amount of calculation data. You can see the mesh for our M45N. We continue to solve the 3D problem, but from a simulation perspective, we bring the 3D geometry uh, down to a 2D geometry level, so it makes the work a lot simpler for us. So we have our M45N meshing. As you can see, here we introduce the initial crack at a balanced height um, on the asphalt. Let me go backwards. We introduce it at the, at the base of this layer here, this second layer. Then after that, we have to enter a certain amount of calculation data, for example, the mechanical characteristics of the road pavement, and then two additional coefficients. These are the coefficients that specify the Paris type law of evolution based on the type of structure. So once we'd set out all of these parameters, we could launch the calculations. And here, I'd like to give you just a few results for these calculations. On the left-hand diagram, On the left-hand diagram, you have the evolution of the height of the crack front that we positioned, initially speaking. And here you can see the load cycles. So we have the heights of the cracks that vary in relation to the horizontal plane. So initially speaking, as I said, we introduced at the base of the EME a crack, a two-centimeter crack. It's this one here, the horizontal line in blue. Then after that, to the surface of the road, we applied the standard twinning and we repeated this load a certain number of times. 
And here we can see that with this repetition of the load, the initial profile evolves and it increases. You've got the crack height that grows the more we add a load until at the end of the load, we have about eight centimeters under one of the wheels, under one of the twinned axles. So the maximum cracking under the wheels is here. You can imagine that the center of the wheels are positioned here and here. So we have a height of about eight centimeters. And what we're able to observe is that this drops off very quickly. The crack zone drops quickly as soon as we move away from the, the rolling area. These profiles have been sketched out for a certain number of cycles. Henceforth, you have this graph. This is the height of the crack under one of the twinning wheels. So if I position myself here on this wheel, it's going to be the maximum here for each profile. So we have the maximum for each profile, uh, the maximum height of the crack, depending on the number of cycles with the load. So we go from a height of two to eight centimeters. As you can see, at two centimeters, we haven't yet started the simulation. There is no load. And at eight centimeters, we can see that to increase the uh, crack to eight centimeters, we need four million, four million load cycles, four million repetitions of the load cycle. And what we also observed here is that the cracking alongside the, the wheels went very much in line, as you can see, it followed the same trend as the amount of loads or the number of loads that were applied. This is an example more of the principle than anything else, just to illustrate what we're able to do with this kind of tool. However, it is important to, uh, to apply it to um, other, other cases and then to all different kinds of experimental measurements with data that you can collect from the field. So just to conclude, obviously this work, as I said, aimed to propose a tool that, digitally speaking, could take into account the behavior uh, on a metric scale of a section of road pavement that contained defects. Part of the work meant that we looked at the state of the cracking at a given moment in time, the impact of the uh, crack, whereas the second part focused on the evolution or the spreading of the given cracks. If we repeat the load on the piece of road pavement, all of this was implemented, taken into account the different calculation codes. And then the last application that I just presented to you was the first case whereby we've started with the crack under the surface and brought it up to the surface. We were able to see how the crack evolved. Initially speaking, we had the height of the crack that was positioned in a flat way, but because of the load, the localized load, we saw that the geometry of this crack evolved, and hence we were capable of evaluating the kinetics based on the number of loads that um, drove over the road pavement. Um, of course, we don't really have any outlook, but I'm just saying that this tool we were able to apply to a certain number of principles. But if we want to have more practical applications in the future, I believe we're going to have to continue with further developments and also formalize certain aspects. And that way, gradually, we'll be able to finalize the usage of this kind of tool. We'll be able to compare with live tests, real life tests, and different instruments. And we'll be able to measure the deformation of the road pavement. I think this is something that will be achieved gradually. However, we do feel that we've made quite a bit of progress thanks to these tests. So I finished on this part, and I think um, somebody else is going to follow on. I personally have finished anyway. <laughs>